Hello. Hello. Good evening. Me go sir. Brando. Practice running. That's essential. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Cyprus. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. So how is the weather there? It's so cold here. Yeah. <laughs> any any money you will work there is uh, is uh, is hard money. That's true because of the currency difference. Not only the currency difference, the work ethics difference. Yes, 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 yes. It's strenuous. Yeah, it's a tedious yeah. job. Yes. I do follow. Hello. Everyone, what's the Seven fifty. Okay, let's be chatting. We'll soon start. Seven fifty. Okay. So, where are you from in Nigeria? I'm from your state. Same state with you. Eh. That's interesting. What part of the state? I'm from Ikanot East. Delta states, Agbo. Okay. Agbo, that's interesting. Boji Boji or which side? Yes, after Boji Boji. You know, it's... That's interesting. Let me see whether. Okay. Okay, this one is better. I, I'm not using, I can own my light if I wish. It's just this Christmas light here. <laughs> I thought you didn't want me to see your face. Roland, please help me on the lights. One second, one second. Okay. You can see me now, okay. right? Yes. <laughs> Fine point. Good. All right. Let's okay, sir. Uh, mute yourself. We want to start now. Okay. Okay. All right. How do I? Also, talk. Also, we are talking about this stuff. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Let me let me regulate this. What's the time? Seven fifty two. Seven fifty two. Okay. Uh, that was our okay. So you you just log in later, eh? By eight. In the next eight minutes, you log in. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Was sex. Good evening. Good evening. I can see Benedict. Benedict, what you will do is to send me a message on WhatsApp plus two three four seven zero five two one three six seven six three. Benedict, where are you watching from? My friend from Nairobi, Kenya, glad to see you. Ado, glad to see you. I'm so glad to have you online. This uh, meeting uh, edition of um, Start Again Intelligently. Promises to be a good time. I don't know if our sister from Japan was able to make it because it's 4 a.m. Oh, good. Heritage, she said, yes, my brother from Okutula. Thank you so much, my bishop. Um, Rejoice FM, how do we do that? I don't think the... Okay, then I need to come. Can you please mute your 
Can you reduce the volume in your place? Can you mute yourself, please? Kaya from Okpela. Thank you so much. Is the cement factory working now? Is the Godwin? You're watching from Portaco. Thank you so much. We have five minutes more. Rejoice from Canada. Thank you so much. I'll be glad if... Um... Okay, the cement factory is working now. That's great. So happy to hear that. So, so happy to hear that. At least it will provide employment. Okay, we are still setting up things. <sighs> okay. Um, how do we do this? Go back a little bit. Yeah, got it. So happy new year to all of you. Happy new year. I wish you the best. And um, I believe God that will maximize our lives this period. So we are waiting for others to join. And once it's eight o'clock Nigerian time, we'll start. I'm waiting for others to join. Okay. Okay. All right. I had to relocate to Okokoko to do this uh, transmission, and I want to thank Abraham for, for coming to assist me. Pastor Nath, good evening. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. Please invite others. If you're in the group, you can invite others to join us. Okay, this is good. Thank God for Charles Adogo. Welcome. Charles Adogo, welcome. Thank you so much for your visit and your gifts. Thank you so much. Charles Adogo, can I can you? Can you send a message for me to know that you are here, Charles Adogo? Are you on now? Oh, Adewale Baoni, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Adewale, where are you based?
ओके प्रेशर्स माय प्रोफेसर वेलकम वेलकम माय प्रोफेसर थैंक यू सो मच my brother Raymond welcome Uche from Uma here Abia state thank you so much Ikare Akoko ah that's quite great thank you so much I'm so glad to have you Uche Kedumaka Abia state Black Uno wera cha Not you know Okay. Brown, what's the time? It's sharp. So good evening. It's eight o'clock Nigerian time. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles uh, Pokey. Happy New Year to you all. We are looking at Start Again Intelligently 2024. That means there will be start again intelligently 2025. Let me make this announcement. I will repeat it towards the end of the lecture. On the 9th of March, 9th of March 2024, we're going to do a master class on real estate. Real estate, master class. I'm going to share with you my experience in real estate, how I started as a very young man in my early, I think I was 29 or thereabout, or 28 when I started buying real estate. I bought the first one at 11,000 Naira and I subsequently sold it. So uh, we'll do a master class on real estate. That's on the 9th of March. 9th of March, 2024. So start again intelligently. What, what does it mean to start? To start is to initiate action, to begin something. One of the greatest challenges most of us have is the inability to take initiative to start. One of the things that has helped me in life is that my wife prompts me to do things. And she said that uh, it's only what is started that is finished. And that the best way to start is to start. And that if you can't start small, you can't grow big. I want to thank uh, the admin of this uh, platform, Ado Iriri, for he, he hung this thing on my neck. I will not have come up with this concept. He just designed the program and hung it on my neck. And uh, I'm so glad he did that. So start to start is to initiate action. There are many things, Eris, thank you so much, Rendo. There are many things you have been dilly-dallying about. I will want you to start something. Take action this year. Take action this week. Take action this month. I have a building I started um, when I was 62. April 27th, I laid the foundation um, three years back. And it has stopped at the linter level. But I am going to start action. I'm going to take initiative after this broadcast. Tomorrow, I'm going to start something. If I can't wait to buy a trailer load of granite, I am going to buy a tipper load that is smaller, and I'll keep accumulating tipper loads. I'm going to start by molding new blocks and putting on top. They told me that the budget is 21 million, the estimate to deck the building is quite a big building. But if I don't start, I can't finish. In Robo language, there are two demons. The two demons are two spirits. One is Uweri. Uweri is the spirit of dilly-dallying. Um, when I am chance, uh, when the economy improves, um, um, you reluctance to start. Then there is the one of eBay. You, 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 
you are going up and down, you are not starting. But break that thing, start. You can't wait until things are perfect before you start. So the next thing is that what is intelligence? What is intelligence? Okay, let me talk, define the word again. Again means afresh. You can do the same thing, but bring freshness into it. Again means a new or another attempt. What is intelligence? Intelligence is the ability to acquire. That means you don't, you don't get born with intelligence. Very few people have natural intelligence. But even if you have natural, extra um, ability, you will still need to learn some things here on earth. So it is acquired. When people say Dr. Pok is an intelligent man, no, 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 no. I'm not a smart man. I only know how to acquire. One of my teachers, Mr. Bamuza, of blessed memory, said that valuable as knowledge is, the power to acquire it independently is more valuable. So the ability to acquire knowledge. So intelligence is the ability to acquire skills and knowledge and apply them. Skills and knowledge and apply them. So you can acquire skills and then you acquire knowledge and then you must apply. A lot of people attend conferences. They attend conferences, they undergo trainings, but they never apply. Nigerians go for training, uh, conferences, in uh, United Nations conferences, declarations, but we never apply what we hear there. So application is important. So knowledge and skills. Skills are not necessarily technical skills. They might, they, they, some of them are social skills. Social skills like uh, uh, punctuality, uh, tolerance, character, I mean, a temper moderation, uh, uh, modesty, integrity. These are skills. They are, not they are not hard skills. They are soft skills. So they are social skills. Then in business and in military and in the, in, in the political arena, it, intelligence involves gathering information. We shall talk about information more as we get along. It involves gathering information. So, um, to start again, intelligent, let me go back to gathering information. Gathering information to take advantage of a situation. If you gather information, and it does not help you take advantage, you become a gossip. Don't you, you heard this one? This one did that. This, you become a gossip. Information should help you gain advantage of your situation. We, you, it helps you gain advantage of your situation. So any information that does not help you gain advantage of your situation is useless to you. You become a gossip. So uh, to start again intelligently means start again with knowledge, with skills, with applicable information. Information. Now, there are areas you can start again. You can start again in business. You can start again in a failed marriage. You can start again more intelligently, even in your own present marriage. I've been married for 39 years this year. There are new techniques I had to learn in marriage to keep the marriage afresh. I told some of you that I marry my wife like a side chick nowadays. I marry her like a side chick. Number one, I create some degree of social distancing and scarcity. So if the quarrels are getting too many where we are at Ugeli, 
I migrate to where I am now. She designed all this, this background here, the solar system we are using. She designed them so that I can, uh, I can have a good time here. So when the quarrels are getting too many, I come here. And you see why side chicks are interesting. Side chicks are interesting because they don't have access to you all the time. And so when I migrate to this side, she stays there for some days. She will call me. What are you doing there? Are you not going to come back home? Is school still in session? Please come back home. She will call my boys. Tell your daddy to come back home. What is he doing there? I have started marrying her intelligently. Then you see towards this age bracket, I'm 65, she's 63 this year. There's the tendency for the fire of romance to start dying down. So I started treating her like a side chick. If we go to the other room and she does very well, I give her money the next day. I say for a good other room experience. And so I've started enjoying the other room more than before. You know, old guns can still fire. David Sokeno, welcome. Old guns can still fire. So I've started the marriage again, afresh with more intelligence. So it can be ministry. I started with church, and I found out that church was going to suffocate me. And Archbishop Benson in the house has said that instead of a church to kill you, kill it and start another thing. I found out that I was not going to grow as fast as, as I would grow if I continued running that church. So I handed the church over. I became a member of the church because um, I didn't want to do anything administratively or ministerially there. So I had to hand over the church and it helped me. I'm better off, I'm freer. One of the things with poverty and stagnation is when you don't have liberty. They said in the presence of God, there is liberty. Liberty is not rascality. Liberty is the ability to bring in the potentials in you. When you pour hydrochloric acid on calcium carbonate, it liberates carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is liberated and never returns into the calcium carbonate crystal substance again. So you will not have been seeing me like this now if I continued with the way I was doing ministry before. So I liberated myself by thinking, if I continued with these people like this, how far will I go? I will talk, talk to you about review. So you start intelligently, anything, ministry, marriage, whatever. So it can also mean prompted and regulate, um, it means starting based on regulation, regimentation, and requirement. We're going to open schools very soon. It is based on regimentation by the government, regulation by the government, and it's, an, it's a requirement. So regimentation, regulation, and requirement can make you start all over again. This Gregorian calendar has declared uh, today, 2nd of um, January. So 2nd of January, I cannot deny that the, the year has not started. Ukraine recently changed their date of Christmas to December 25th. It was regulated by government and it's now December 25th. Before now, they were using the Julian calendar of the Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church. So to start again might involve regimentation, governmental requirements, societal requirements, and regulation. But you can start a new job or you can start your old job in the new year, but you can start it more intelligently or with intelligence. What I want to do here is to look at key principles and not just be taking one case study after the other. And I will use um, Ruth as a character study because it's very difficult to talk to Christians and teach them philosophy or teach them anything without them asking you whether is it in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? Is it in the scriptures? So, but we'll look at general principle. Principle number one is to review. 
you must see what most people don't do is that they don't review their lives. When I got to 3940, I sat down and reviewed my life. I was practicing medicine, and uh, people, people were thinking I was a successful person, Doki, Doki. I know you carry your shoulders, Doki. But I looked at myself. I looked at what I wanted to become. I looked at where I wanted to reach when I was a child. And I found out that, I, number one, I was behind my mates. Number two, I was behind in my personal agenda. And I told my wife that I'm going to leave Abba. I'm going to start a new life in New Guinea. And I'm going to stop practicing medicine. Because what did I notice? I noticed that as doctors got older, they are still working in old age. And I didn't want to work in old age. Today I woke up, did some land transactions. Then after some time, I switched up my phone and slept. In my book, uh, 60 to 70, that I, my, the new book that just came out, 60 to 70, one of the days in October last year, I just woke up. I found out that I finished training all my children. I woke up, I found out that I don't pay house rent anywhere. I woke up and I found out that I don't need to work for any person until I leave this world before I eat. So that was the way I wanted to live. And at 40, I decided to start again. And that was what made me to come to Ugili. So you can review your life. <coughs> Excuse me. You can review your life for improvement. I wrote here that you need to go to the potter's house. Jeremiah chapter 18. At 40, I visited the potter's house again. After getting born again, I visited the potter's house again. And when you visit the potter's house, you must remove granules from your life. When you want to use clay to mold, if you want to mold a, uh, a vessel that is of honor, like China plate, the one used to eat, is of fine clay. You remove the granules. But if you want to make a toilet seat or a clay bed, you don't need to remove the granules. If you don't remove the granules from the China plate, when you put it in the kiln, I don't know how to pronounce it, K-I-L-N, where it is heated up, those big granules, because they have a different rate of linear expansivity, they will form the lines through which that plate will crack. For those of you from Uruboland, there's something called Ewere, those clay pots. It's made of fine, they do it near me, I told Ted, that they will remove all the leaves, remove all the, the stones, so it's now fine clay. If you review your life, there are some things that need to be removed. Number one, I found out that every Saturday in those days, I will sleep. Number two, I found out that I was trying to be a philanthropist with poverty. I was trying to help people with poverty. I found out that I wanted to change society without being changed. I was going to leper colony, remand home, uh, motherless baby's home. I was always asking for things from people. And I found out that I could not continue like that. I needed to build myself before building people. I, I did a video recently on YouTube about when you are in the aircraft, they will tell you if there is a sudden drop in oxygen pressure, that an oxygen mask will fall from above your head, that you should first put on your mask and get in oxygen before you help any person, including your child near you. So. I found out that I could not help the poor from the level of poverty. I found out that evidence preaches better than theology. That is to say, if I was going to preach to people who are medical doctors, who are intellectuals, who are professionals, I don't only need to quote scriptures, I need to have structures to show them. I was doing ministry, and I do really will testify to that, who will print handbills, who will do banners. People were not coming. And I asked God, why are people not coming? 
Oh, Fejiro, thank you so much. All the way from Japan. I know it's 4 a.m. there. Thank you so much. So I knew that. Uh, then I, I prayed, why are people not coming? And God told me. God told me. He said, produce results. Now, when you produce results, people will come. And then I settled down to start producing results before inviting people to come. And the results invited people. And there's some of you who attend Charles Adogo and Ado Eriri and uh, Professor Precious Omoruwo, you can testify to the fact that on October 1st and Easter Monday, we start by 10 o'clock. We don't wait for people. And people keep running, they run down. We don't wait for people because they've seen results. I even found out that as a guest preacher, if I invite people to come and give, to come and see me in my school before going to preach to them, they give me bigger honorarium because I learned intelligently that we are teaching you people, give and it shall be given unto you. But you can't give what you don't have. The Bible says you can't give what you don't have. That to him who has, more will be given. And to him who does not have, the little he has will be taken from him. Wow. When I learned that, I said, wow, the secret of getting is to get. And so I started producing results, producing results. And now I am getting more in my life than when I had no results. When I was introducing myself to people, I wasn't getting results. Now people introduce themselves to me because I have results. So I started again intelligently. You don't need to start from beginning. In the middle of the game, you can change. You can introduce a new player into the Chelsea team and it will score. You can bring Osime in into the Super Eagles and it will score. So I reviewed my life and I went to the Potter's house and he started remodeling me and remolding me. Now, if you must interrogate your life, you must have the readiness to improve. Readiness to improve. If you don't have the readiness to improve, the year, the new year is not new. You can't enter the new year with your old you and expect a new year. You must enter the new year with a new you. If not, you can't change. I told you people that in the year 2020, I decided to enter the new year with the mindset of a global citizen. I told myself, and I announced it on radio, it was the year of globalization, and it came to pass. So in Japan, and um, our sister there will testify to it. In Japan, there is a word called Kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N. If you watch, if you look at Toyota Corolla, Toyota Corolla panel van is different from the Toyota Corolla station wagon today. If you check all the Japanese cars, they have improved a great deal. Kaizen states with a philosophy that states that there is no perfect end and that everything can be improved upon, and that people must strive to evolve and innovate constantly. So there is no perfect end. Dr. Pookie, this is not a perfect end. I need to improve. You need to improve. Improve on your packaging, improve on your presentation, improve on your performance, improve on your relationship, improve on your branding. You are a brand, improve on your brand. So there is no perfect end. One of the things that will make you never do well in life is to stagnate. You just stay in one place. You want to remain to say, this is how we have been doing it. This is how we have been doing it. That's why traditional societies don't develop. One of the major problems with uh, Africa is that we are very, very traditional. Now, so they do and since, and now so then they do and since. No room for improvement. Thank you, my brother from Turkey. So, um, you must, there is no perfect end, constant improvement. So, the next thing is interrogate yourself. 
interrogate your systems, the way you do things. I'll give you an example. Before now, we, when parents come to collect results, they will need to pay a certain amount for tissue paper, for that and that. And it was breeding crisis. Parents will quarrel and all that. So I uh, told my wife, my wife now remove that. So they don't come to with tissue paper and all that again. Just build that into the, the school fees. And then they, will, uh, they won't, won't have that crisis. So the collection rate for results improved. Before now, she was paying cash. Told her, don't do that. And so today, you collect the, the accounts of the teachers and you send money into the accounts. And it's, it's safer. It's easier. So you must interrogate your system. This system that I'm using, is it the best? This style that I'm using, is it the best? <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story. Uh, I had a woman. She said that uh, her husband does not give her money for cook. Uh, she, the husband does not open up to, to, to her. The husband was always angry. And they called the best man, the sponsor of the marriage. He couldn't solve the problem. So they came to meet me. And I told the man, the man is a senior advocate. I told the man, I said, I know your problem. That when you come from the courts and you come from your chamber, you want to discuss these court cases with your wife, but she is not there. The man shouted, you got it. You got it. The woman was a secondary school, uh, primary school teacher. I told her, go and read law. She went to the University of Uyo and read law and graduated. When they go to the chamber together, they discuss, as they are coming back, they discuss cases, the marriage improved. And then one day, I saw her going to meet her husband in the office. That was before she read the law. I told her, she was well-dressed, very beautiful lady. I said, when you get to your, your husband's office, sit on his lap and kiss him. Hi, she said. The person remain here. Can I, will I be able to do that? I said, do it if not other girls will do it. And she just walked into the office, said, and said, sat on the husband's lap and kissed the man. The man shouted, wait, 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 wait. Who taught you this kind of thing? Thank God my name was not mentioned. If not, maybe I would have ended up in prison. And the marriage improved. Today she's a magistrate. She is a magistrate. And the marriage is booming. That weekend that the woman sat on the lap of the husband and kissed, kissed the husband. He bought shoe, bought wrappers for the woman. This marriage, marriage, marriage quarrel, trouble, trouble, trouble. It is just common sense you need to apply. Just common sense. A little bit of intelligence. A little bit of changing your nightgown. A little bit of changing your panties. Don't keep wearing a boxer as a woman. There, there's something called G-string. You can wear it. You see, men know how to pretend, but we like to look. Just wear G-string. The man will shout. You'll be surprised what will happen. So bring innovation. Question your system, your style, and make sure you improve on your standards and your performance. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. Think differently from 2023. Think like 2024. i give you an example. Um, people are complaining about Tinibu. People are complaining. They complained about Buhari. But Buhari's era, COVID era, I had more money, more open doors, more exposure, more ministry than before COVID and then uh, before Buhari. And I'm going to do very well in the Tinubu era. Let me explain to you. I don't need to depend on the Nigerian economy. I can create my own economy. When you create your own economy, you obey the rules and regulations of the country, but create your own economy. John from Dubai, thank you so much. Create your own economy. I give you an example. That people are complaining of the increase in the price of the value of dollar relative to the naira. So 
Why don't you create an economy that does not depend on uh, dollars? I will not, as of today, my children are in Europe. Excuse me, unless they buy a ticket for me to fly down, I will not fly to Europe. No, 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 no. To go and see what? To see the streets in Germany. Anywhere they took pictures in Germany, I was able to tell them, oh, they, were, they stood in, on top of the River Rhine. They were overlooking the River Rhine. I said, that's the River Rhine. That's the River Rhine. So if I want to tour some countries today, I'll tour them inside this phone. The world has changed. I'm 65. I don't need to be going to sit in front of an embassy waiting for visa to go to one country. I have traveled enough. So what do I do? I need to build a legacy for my children. Start a new life for my children. A new life for my children and my grandchildren. That is my primary concern. I've had a good life. Had a very good life. My children, uh, one of my children said that uh, we need to meet in Germany or the whole family gather in Europe. I said, no, come and gather in Africa. Come and gather here. I'm not going to stay in snow. I'm not going to eat a pizza that looks like a, we see that they put tomatoes and egg. Come and gather here. We will gather here and then you will know where you come from. My grandchildren will know where I come from. And then I will eat banga soup and starch here. I won't go to that side. So I've changed my orientation. I try to reduce what I buy that will necessitate foreign exchange and produce things that people can buy locally. Now, I tell you the truth of the matter. You can, we will arrange for you to have the books online. Online. So this economy, I don't need to complain about Tinibu. I don't need to drive my car to long distances. I don't need to drive my car to long distances. We were to do a conference in a, in a Potat and a Asaba, Wari and Ugeli for principals of government schools. I did not drive the Mercedes there. It will cost me about 70,000 Naira to 80,000 Naira to buy fuel to get to Asaba. What did I do with Abraham? We went to the park. We bought three seats for 9,000. 3,000, two or four sat behind. We were discussing. We got to Asaba, came back with 9,000 naira, 18,000 naira. We slept in the hotel somebody paid for. And I didn't want to eat there to accumulate bills. We went to eat outside the hotel where the general populace eats. And I saved money. When they paid me for the engagement that I had, I'm going to use it to publish books. And I will use the books I will sell. I will make millions from the books. So that is how I'm thinking differently. Uh, foreign exchange, dollar, dear, this one. How what concerns me with dollar? I'm a bushman in Ugeli, and I live according to Ugeli economics. I sell things that they will buy. So that is the thing. You change your orientation. You rebuild an economy within the economy. Okay, that's very good. Now, when you interrogate yourself, do stop blaming others. I wonder why African pastors, including me, before now, oh, there was a message I preached. Uh, anything can happen. Oh, when we finished preaching, and people uh, we are sweating, and they say the, the thing was electrocution. They fall down, big, big, big. But the people wake up the same. They fall down, they break chairs. In fact, some of them, before you start preaching, they're already doing like a helicopter, like propeller of helicopter. No, Africans are not changing because their minds are not transformed and will keep blaming the devil. We are the only people that blame our ancestors, the Japanese that believed in the sun god, the Indians that believed in idol worship. They don't blame their ancestors. It is only we that have ancestral causes, and they don't, you don't realize that if you, you don't leave any good thing for your children, you also be an ancestor that your children will pray against. My grandfather, my wife's grandfather, my wife's grandfather uh, sent money from the land of the dead to his six grandchildren. My wife's grandfather died long time ago, around, I can't, I can't remember when he died sent money recently from the land of the dead 
to her six to his six grandchildren. He sent 15 million. 15 million. Wow. He left ancestral blessing behind. There was a piece of land he, that was near his house. That place was bush in those days. A piece of land and an antenna was located there. And periodically they paid them 15, they paid them 15 million. So the man died a long time ago, and the children are collecting 15 million. They are sharing. So my wife, her own share, she used it to develop a land that she inherited from her maternal grandfather. No, listen well, black people listen well, church people listen well. She got money, 2.5 million from her maternal grand, her paternal grandfather's inheritance. And then she went to her maternal grandfather's inheritance where they located, allocated a plot of land to her. And she's building a, 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 a they call it bed sitter in Nigeria. That will be bringing money for her. We took our daughter and our granddaughter there. They will inherit that building so that even when we die, they will be getting money from their ancestral great grandfather's blessing. It is only people from poor homes. It is only fathers and mothers that did not leave an inheritance for their children's children that are ancestors that one lazy pastor will start praying for. Germany killed millions of Jews. Their economy is doing well. Ancestral causes is not uh, troubling them. It's only we black people. As if Satan fell in Nigeria, it's only we black people. We must change our theology and become more intelligent in studying the Bible. So stop blaming others. Stop blaming witches. Stop blaming witches. Stop blaming your enemies. Why must you not blame them? I give you a formula that will make you do well in life. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Remember, I told you, that part of intelligence gathering is gathering information so that you can take advantage of, have an advantage over your rivals. Now the Bible is saying that, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So when you are ignorant of the devices of the devil, he takes advantage over you. So the devil is not wiser than God. And I have the mind of God. So I can be smarter than the devil. Let me explain to you. There is a, a demon I call in the Robo language, the demon of Ejukonemu, who call is trouble. Nemo is let there not be trouble in whatever I'm doing. I had an invitation to go and speak to a big company in Lagos. Okay, let me start with my wife. I told my wife on her 60th birthday, I said, look, baby, Anytime we have a big celebration coming, and some of you will testify, anytime you have a good thing coming to your family, there must be quarrel between you and your husband. And I told my wife, your 60th birthday is coming, home, and I know that every, six, every big occasion we have, quarrel must come. Please don't let quarrel come, this one. I don't want to quarrel. So maintain your cool. Let me maintain my cool. That's intelligence. I had pre informed them but she still brought quarrel. And the quarrel is not between two of us, maybe 200 naira, maybe one driver, maybe musician. And she quarreled, but I don't know. Me, I withdrew because I'm wiser. The wiser person restrains himself. It takes strength to avoid the fight. So I stood, she dressed up, I was waiting for her. She dressed up, then she told me, come. And I went, he said, let's take picture so that you can post it on Facebook. So I embraced her from behind and she whispered to me, say, people seeing this picture now, they won't know that we quarreled in the morning. <laughs> Don't kill yourself because of husband and wife you see on Facebook. We quarreled and then she said, we should take picture. I embraced her, we took picture, we posted on Facebook. Ah, come and see comments, lovely couple. Oh, I admire you. Oh, this is beautiful. We quarrel. But I warned her because I have studied and understood how the devil comes into my family. 
the things that bring quarrels are not usually as a result of difference between myself and herself. It's usually outsiders. Okay, when I'm traveling to go and preach, as I'm going with her, suddenly somebody would enter in front of the car, drive anyhow. I'll say, why is this person driving like a madman? She will say, man of God, madman. And then I'll say, what, will you kill me because I'm a, I'm a man of God? What can't I say my mind? Before you know it, we have quarreled. She's looking to the right, I'm looking to the left. I will manage to reach the church. When I enter the church, they will just welcome the man of God. I will just smile. When I smile, I will preach, and I will preach very well. But Anna said, how can we continue like this? So some, most times now, I travel without her. I do what is called marital social distancing. I do what is called married but single. What is married but single? This pen is a single pen. But it has cover, which is Dr. Apoki, the head of the house. It has the body, my wife and my children. And then there is a small place where we interact and function. So I find the areas where two of us can interact and function without crisis, and then that's how we operate. If not, if we, if we want to do, and the two shall become one, every day I'm going with her. The closer we are, sometimes the more the friction. So question and interrogate your systems. Stop blaming the devil. Know the devices of the devil. I give you an example. I was telling you I was invited to go and speak to a big multinational. And my flight, okay, when they called me in the farm, they said they would speak to me by five. I left the farm because I know the devil. That is when your battery will run down. I know the devil. That's when network will be bad. In fact, I wanted to sleep and God spoke to me, leave your phone on. Phones Modern phones are created for opportunities. Leave it on. So they rang me from Lagos. Can you speak to us tomorrow? Yes. Um, can you be in Lagos tomorrow? Yes. And then the next thing was that we are booking a flight for you from Benin for 5 o'clock. I left Ugeli by 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Because I know the devil, Leju Konemu. That day you have a big opportunity. That's the day trailer, a tanker, will fall across the road. And people will go and collect petroleum products. And then fire will burn them. And then your car can't get to the airport on time. So I left by 10 a.m. to Benin. So that even if a tanker falls, if I start trekking, I will get to Benin. Lo and behold, at Ologo, tanker fell. But before they could start gathering fuel, we had left. And I got to Lagos on time. I got to Lagos. I wrote the lecture, sent to the woman. Then they put a, large, a, a long row of meals to eat. I ate only the meal that I'm used to, gari and soup. Why? Ejukonemu. That's when you will go and have long throat, greed. You go and eat what you have not eaten before. The morning you are supposed to be giving the lecture, you start purging. Then you come and say, ah, I was to give the lecture. Suddenly the devil came and struck me and I fell sick. Not the devil. Your truth struck you. Your, your stupidity struck you. So I got to the lecture hall. I wore this big gown. The other people there were drinking tea, the professors there before me. I didn't go and drink tea. Because I know the devices of the devil. It is when I will go and take the teacup that this is my big gown that I'm not used to. We now drank teacup and saucer and fall down and hot water will pour on my leg and I won't be able to give the lecture. So I didn't eat. I stayed. It was after the lecture that I ate in the hotel. So you must know how the devil operates. If your community or your church gives you money to keep, if they give you money to keep. If you touch that money, that day you touch the money, that is the day they will ask for the money. If you sleep with your house girl, she will deliver twins. The next month your wife will get pregnant who has not had children. If people are crossing a place, the day you, pastor, go and cross the illegal place, that is the day they will come, police will arrest people. So I know the devices of the devil and I avoid them.
If I'm driving another man's car, I am extremely very, very careful because that car you borrowed, that's the day somebody will come and hit you. So I know the devices of the devil. I, I was doing a video I posted on uh, Facebook. I was recording people entering an eatery fiesta. After recording them, I stood. I was watching. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me, live here now so that we, we won't hear stories that touch. Because they will not say, Dr. Poki was standing. One Yahoo Yahoo boy just came and cleared him and he died. That was how my professor friend was killed by an internet fraudster. So I try as much as possible to know the possibilities of how the devil will want to stagnate and stunt my growth and my advancement. And because I am aware and ahead, I always take precautionary measures. Sometimes I might look sluggish, but I know where I am going to. So you need to know the devices of the devil. You need to know how to avoid them as pastor. You need to know how to avoid them as, as pastor's wife, as businessman. This period is not the period you put money in people's hands recklessly. If you don't know the person well enough, you might get into problems. So know the devices of the enemy. How many of the intrigues of the enemies do you know? He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge of, I'm, I'm, I'm extending it, extrapolating now, lack of knowledge of what? Knowledge of God, yes, but also knowledge of the devices of the devil. So I said intelligence includes, uh, includes um, information. How do you gather information? Number one. First of all, remember that information turns to knowledge when it is applied to produce results, desired results. Any information that is not applied, that is not applicable, is virtually useless. So how do I get information? By intuition. I meditate a lot. I hardly go to ceremonies. I am not excited when people are excited. I stay, I live inside me. And as I'm living inside me, suddenly an idea will just drop. Pam, ideas I have never had before. You see, most of what I'm doing, I never studied. I have never been to Bible school. I have never studied agriculture. I didn't study education, but I'm running my schools well. I, I did study entrepreneurship, but I lectured entrepreneurship in the university even without being interviewed for the job. So I meditate a lot. I learn from my mind. And in the calmness of my mind, things drop in. So there are three types of intuition. There is a eidetic intuition. A eidetic intuition is that knowledge that comes, pian, you didn't study it. Then there is emergent intuition. You are thinking like Archimedes was thinking in Syracuse. Syracuse was invaded, war was on. Archimedes did not even know there was war. They broke into his place of meditation. He was still meditating and calculating. So Archimedes was thinking about flotation and uptrust. When he entered his bathtub, water was displaced. And then he jumped out of the bathtub, Eureka. That is how the Eureka can was invented. So you, you must meditate, emergent intuition. Then there is ideal intuition. You want to know if this thing you want to do is good or not good. There is something called the gut feeling, the gut feeling. Before now, we had the skin as a sensory organ, the ear as a sensory organ, the nose as a sensory organ, the eye as a sensory organ, the tongue as a sensory organ. They have now found out that there is a sixth sensory organ called the mesentery. The mesentery is that thing that holds the intestines whitish. You have blood vessels, it's pinkish when the thing is alive, the animal or person is alive. You have the blood vessels, you have the nerves, you have the lymphatics. So when you have, 
you, when when you your your system does not want it, there is a gut feeling. There is a gut feeling inside you. You don't you don't feel good about it. That is there is that's ideal intuition. Your system is rebelling against that transaction. Is rebelling against that relationship. And women who are the Holy Spirit of the house, because the Bible says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave behind for you a comforter. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will give him a suitable help meet, a paraclete. That's how the women are, the Holy Spirit of the house. They have this sense of God feeling more than men. And so you must listen to your God feeling. That, those are three basic ways uh, you get information from the supernatural. But there is natural information that will lead to intelligence. The Bible says in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, that Naomi heard that there was no bread in Bethlehem. Number one, that information was verifiable. Number two, it is applicable. Number three, it is transferable. Number four, it is workable. So you must ask yourself, what's happening in this generation? What's happening in this generation? Uh, we are using, uh, uh, what's it called now? YouTube Live. It's an innovation. In fact, the internet is the next oil well. And internet has helped me grow my ministry. Many of you, I never knew you before. I never met you physically. I was traveling around Africa with my money. I don't need to personally go to some of these countries again. We can meet here. And so, workable information, verifiable information. But the truth of the matter, as a pastor, I feel very guilty. Most of what we are teaching you and Moses, these are the days of Elijah, Moses. No, Moses had died and gone. It's my day. And the, the, the rules of the game in my day are different from the rules of the game in the time of Moses. The Red Sea does not need to divide now. I can use submarine to pass it. I can use a cruise ship to pass it. This, this, the present dispensation has its rules. The supernatural is there. The supernatural, the miraculous, is only an intermittent intervention of divinity in the affairs of humanity when humanity is helpless and confused. But God will not help you do what you are supposed to use your brain to do. God will not change Africa. Africans need to change Africa. My helper, oh, my helper. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing people prophesy. You will meet your helper. This day. Africa has received help, help, help. Over the years, we have not improved. Why? Africa has not done the following. When you hear information and you know what is happening in a generation, every generation has its own information. So Naomi heard. Then she planned. Then she prepared. Then she broke inertia. Inertia, that is the reluctance to move, the reluctance to stop when you're enjoying comfort, sponsored comfort. You're enjoying, I know somebody who worked in an oil company. He was enjoying sponsored comfort. He has retired now. He is like a tree that the leaves are falling off because he did not know how to transit from the regulated oil company uh, and to, into the streets, into the street life. So when you plan, you must break inertia. What are the things that constitute inertia in your life? Routine, routine. Wake up in the morning, go to work by 8 o'clock, close by 5 o'clock, sleep, wake up again like that. Go to church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Break routine. Break the routine. Number two, regularity. Salary is regular, 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 regular. Why don't you have some things that are not regular, incomes that are not regular, that might come? My invitations are not regular. School fees is there. 
but we have the canteen that brings regular money. But I have projects, I have things that I do that bring income. So number one, break routine, break regularity, break um, regimentation. That's how we do it. This is how we do it. There are some relationships you need to break. When I was coming to Ugeli, I told myself that I was not going to make friends like as I did at Abba. I had too many friends. I had friends, if I don't see them, I won't do some things. I told myself, I will not have any friend that if I don't see him, that I will not do a thing. I told myself, I will dare to walk alone. Let me talk to you so that um, some of you might leave this channel now. Some of you will abandon me. My wife is not my prayer partner. I don't have prayer partner. I pray for myself. I pray by myself. Because in those days, even from morning devotion, quarrel can come out. If we have quarrel before morning devotion, the thing will not flow. I said, no, we will not continue like this. No, 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 no. I was praying for myself before I got married. So pray for yourself. I pray for myself. When we need to pray together, we come together and pray together. I don't wear the same color of dress with my wife. Wear your own, I wear my own. We're not school children. So this uh, regimentation, husband and wife, I found out that we became more productive as she was doing her own and I'm doing my own. She came this morning and she was looking for money. Ah, I said, you have changed the system of hiding your money. I said, how? He said, in those days, your money used to be everywhere. I would just see and pick money. Now I've searched the whole of your room. I can't see the money more intelligently. <laughs> more intelligently. I broke the routine. I gave her a system to be controlling. Me, I started controlling the system. It was very frustrating in those days. If I want to do a thing, I would go and ask her for money. Ah, you know, women are money. They hide money in dangerous places inside Brazil and all those kind of places. She will not, she will want to interrogate me. No, I said, no, I can't continue like this. So I gave her the schools, manage, manage. Me, I started managing my own small, small businesses. They still, she still comes to meet me. And I give to her. If we were going together, doing to, every morning we wake up, we go to the school, our income will be limited to the school. And to what, to, but my brain was too big for the school alone and to be managing school with her. I told myself, Oh, he does not sit down in his schools. Kumu, he does not sit down in his schools. Madam, you and your daughter take schools. Me, I am finding a new future. And my young men around me, people like Reverend Samson Bojo, Barista Okea, and others, they were, they wondered how I gathered the confidence to be able to leave the school and leave all the money for her. Today, I am richer. Today, I am better. Today, I am happier. Today, the family is better. <coughs> Excuse me. So break routine. And then break some, leave some relationships. I, I, I went to Pentecostal Fellowship meeting. And the pastors were complaining. There's no money in Ugeli. There's no money in Ugeli. Ah! I was seeing vehicles, I got for motors going to Onicha, they will bring goods. I never saw anyone returning goods to Onicha. I see there must be money in this town. It's only that the pastors, <coughs> excuse me, can you give me some water? It's just that the pastors don't know how to get the money. <coughs> excuse me. So I studied the rich people in town what they were doing. And I needed to do my own stuff and get money. This money, this money, money woke me up. People came to buy broilers. Okay, on New Year Day, money woke me up. Money woke me up. Who day? I said, we day. We want broiler. I know me down go to or I day like I did sell fowl and I did okay. Money, money, power, money, not the smell. Thank you, Abraham. So, break the routine. Then break religious fallacies. I don't want to get into trouble, excuse me. I don't want to.
want to get into trouble. But there are so many religious practices that we follow that stagnate us. They stagnate us. Go back home, question some of the religious practices that you follow. Jesus did that. They brought an adulteress. They should stone her to death. Jesus questioned, interrogated them. I won't tell you, I won't tell you some things here so that you won't get angry with me. I won't tell you. Give us never lack. If you give without productivity, you will lack. It is producers that never lack. <clears throat> those who sell, those who have goods, those who have services. I was preaching this years back. People attacked me. Now, the big pastors are preaching it now. Maybe because I didn't have a big church. They are not preaching it. Excuse me. So, religious fallacies. Arrow, so you notice that I've talked about arrow one, arrow two, arrow three, arrow four, arrow five, arrow six, relocation. Relocation. Sometimes you need to relocate from where you are not getting enough allocation. Relocate to where a location where you can get better allocation. Relocation. You must move. Then. Uh, root number uh, the, in the book of root chapter 1 16 and 17 root was complaining <coughs> excuse me you must avoid negativity avoid negativity ha ah, if i listen to people around me i will not have reached this level when i was starting newly ah you're not dressing well. Ah, you, your car. Ah, this. Ah, why did you sell the hospital? Ah, if you don't have a church, you cannot do well. Ah, if you don't. Most of the things they said I should do, uh, I didn't do that, and I've done better. Ah, you're, you're, you, you shout too much when you are preaching. Ah, when you are preaching, it's as if you are angry. Why are you using so much anger? Is there, not, is there not enough problems in Nigeria to be angry about? When you wake up in Nigeria, you should feel angry. In fact, we are unnecessarily happy. You see our young girls, they are dancing. They are dancing at a piano. They are shaking buttocks with poverty. There's so much happiness in the midst of poverty. I get angry. I don't watch Nigerian television. Don't watch Nigerian television. Because I get angry. They say I, I preach with so much anger. That is me. People want to, Ruth was, Naomi was complaining and complaining. Ruth said, don't tell me to go back. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. Where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, I will be buried. Bam! By getting that spirit of determination, a rule was changed in the Bible. The Bible says no descendant of a Moabites shall enter the temple until the tenth generation. But Ruth was the great grandmother of David. David was the fourth generation descendant of a Moabites. And he entered the temple, even though he was not a priest, and ate the showbread. Sometimes when God sees somebody who is determined enough, energized enough, sometimes he brings in the prerogative of mercy. Prerogative of mercy is a legal term. When somebody is guilty of an offense, but the governor, the president, oh, Isabel from Kigali, welcome. Thank you so much. Chica, thank you. So you, 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 there's a kind of determination when you are determined, if I, when you are starting afresh, you can't start behaving like somebody who wants to retire. I didn't have admission letter before I got to university. I heard there was no graduate in my family. And I had stayed at home for one year. I heard that they were trying to do matriculation in the University of Ibadan. And I carried my load without admission letter. 
My father said, where is the port of admission later? I said, when I get there, I will get the admission. I got there. My name was on the list. They did not send it. They did not type it. They gave me my letter by hand. I went to Lagos, get, got letter from Lagos, came back to the university. Listen, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes, if you wait and wait, unbelievers might eat the main meal and you will eat remnants. There is a time when you say, God, give me my own. I've waited for too long. There are doors. The Bible says, knock and it shall be opened. There are doors that are locked and the owners are very far inside. When you knock, they won't open. Look for a stone. Hit the gate and they will tell you who is there. Tell them, I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoke. I have waited for too long. I want something now. When a woman is pregnant and there are people waiting for the doctor and she comes late and she shouts, whoa, doctor. The doctor will leave his office and say, who is that disturbing my clinic? Say, doctor, I want to give birth. Some of you, you are, you are not under pressure enough. Your baby has not pushed you enough. There are pregnancies in you that are supposed to be delivered. And people are telling you, wait. People are telling you, stay. People are telling, no, there are times I am aggressive sometimes because I'm carrying the burden of several generations on my back. I want to start a new Apoki family intelligently. So when I see my grandchildren in Europe, I see my children in Europe, I feel very excited that I was aggressive enough not to follow protocol. In Nigeria, it might not reach your tongue. So sometimes be aggressive. So avoid negativity. Now be steadfast. Then the next thing is there is a harvest at every time. Ruth got to uh, Moab, I got to Bethlehem during the barley harvest. What is it that is trending in your country? What is it that is happening in this generation? This generation is an information era. This information, this generation is an AI era, artificial intelligence. This generation is a generation of smallness, savings, is a generation of saving money, saving energy, saving time, saving stress. Save people stress, and you will make money. Make things easier for people. You will make money. Save people time. You will make money. So don't the mentality of the black man is that the more he stresses people, the more importance he has. People, our rich, our big men come to occasions late. Change the narrative. I don't go late. I don't go late. Make it easier for people to assess your product. Make it easy for people to assess you. You are listening to me now. It's easy. You are listening to me, drinking coffee, eating popcorn from the comfort of your house. You know? No. So what is the harvest? Number two, you need leverage. There are some friends I have. Anytime they call me, should I send my address, my, my account? Should I send my account? Urgent 2000. They are always looking for something from me. If I continue like that, I will dry up. So you need new people who can give you leverage. And sometimes there are some of the old ones that you can leverage on, like Ruth leveraged on Naomi to get to Bethlehem. So always look for relationships that add value to you, that can leverage you. A lever, lever, mechanical advantage, load effort, lever, fulcrum. You need people who can lift you up. Trust God and take the first step. Ruth said that, let me go into the farm. Don't wait for perfect conditions this year. Step out. God will perfect them. He said, let me go into the farm of the person in whom I will have favor. Now, she started with principles. Don't just do things because somebody has prophesied. Nigerians, all of us have turned to prophets. Prophets. We prophesied against Tinibu. They still saw him in. He has not died. We can prophesy in Nigeria. It's a country of prophets. 
And when people are not hearing from God, there is there's, there's the abundance of prophets. So, start with principles. She knew that she was qualified for gleaning. Number one, she was a stranger. Number two, she was a widow. Number three, she was poor. Poor. So she had three conditions that qualified her. What is it that you are qualified for? What is it that God has made provisions for you in your talent, in your ability, in your training, in your skills? Step out. When you step out, God will perfect. When she stepped out, according to her declaration, learn to declare. When you declare, there's something called panpsychism. The whole environment will hear. Moses' mother said, this is a proper child. And so she started, started to prepare. She built an ark, put Moses. God went and hacked the website of Pharaoh's daughter, www.pharaoh's daughter. Come and uh, go and bath in the waterside. That was how Moses' mother saved Moses in the midst of hardship. So declare. Declare this year. I'm going to make the first year I said I was going to have one million in my account. It took up to November 15 before I got 1.15 million. So declare the world would the world was created by declaration. And if you have the mind of Christ and the power of life and death is in your tongue, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaketh. So have this dream, have this uh, vision, have these pregnancies, declare them. I used to go into my school, stand in the water, and call the buildings into existence. The buildings are there. I had no money when I was declaring them because I wanted to start afraid. So declare them. Now, I must round up. The next thing is that uh, always know your state and know your status. I knew I was a medical de doctor. That was my st uh, status. I knew I was starting afresh. I knew in between my status and my state, I needed substance. If you have a status, interrogate yourself, know your state. If you go and create a status that you don't have substance in between, the pressures of life will compress you. I told you, don't be a philanthropist from the position of poverty. Develop substance. When you develop substance, you can be a philanthropist. Don't be a motivational speaker when you don't have what can motivate people. Motivate yourself first. I told Ado, he's listening to me when he, he wanted money from me. He got, he wanted, I say, you say you're a motivational speaker. I said, okay. Go and motivate yourself. Look for money to pay for it. He was angry with me, but I needed him to learn that lesson, and it has helped me, helped him. So, yes, your status, your state. When you are starting intelligently, just be building your state to match with your status. If not, if you keep building a status, like what we are doing on social media, what we are doing on TikTok, you are building popularity and there's no purpose between, there's, there are no properties in between, <laughs> no productivity, the pressures of life will compress you. So Ruth knew that she needed to work very hard in the farm. So she worked very hard. And what she ate, she remained small, took home. You can't finish your salary this year. You can't be finishing your salary every month and be waiting. No, save some aside. Reinvest some in little, little things. I'm so happy those of you in this group. I'm seeing your products, Sydney from South Africa, your bakery, um, your gardens. Uh, my sister is a Ben in Kigali. Your, so many people are establishing different, different things from their regular salaries in this platform. So you are building substance to match your status. And you are working hard. Work harder, work smarter, if you are starting afresh. I was the first bus driver. My 50th birthday, I spent it on the road because I needed money to deck the school building. And by the time I traveled around four cities, I came back with half a million naira and I decked that building. I could not sit down that my 50th birthday, 50th birthday status, but states nothing. Then I'm going to do a party and expect gifts from people. No. 
70th birthday, people will bring gifts, they will bring cars, because I, I will attain a status by then, and substance will come. You need people, people, you need a boaz in your life, people of substance. Then you must cultivate a recommendable brand. People must recommend you. Develop a brand. Develop a brand that people can recommend you. Dr. Poki, you see here, is a deliberate creation. It's an intentional creation. This wall behind me is an intentional creation by my wife. It's deliberate. The school here, if you go outside this evening, it's like Europe. It's an intentional creation. My wife will always say, this one, you are motivating people. You are doing motivational speaker. Don't let them come and not see anything. Make sure, after motivating them outside, when they come inside, let them see what resembles what you are preaching. So it's a deliberate creation. Deliberately create a brand. A brand of punctuality, a brand of integrity, a brand of seriousness, a brand of productivity. Create a brand. What is a brand? A brand are the discussions people have about you, the discussions you generate. Deliberately generate discussions. Deliberately generate discussions. So, the world is like Bethlehem. Bethlehem was filled with gossip. Oh, is this Naomi? Oh, uh, we have heard what you did for your mother-in-law. Boaz has heard. Then Naomi heard that um, uh, Boaz was stretching his wits. Hey, Bethlehem is a pool of information. The world is like Bethlehem. It's a, it's a, it's a global street. There's so much information learn, gather. Let me just tell you one thing. If you study... If, uh, if you study um, uh, cyber security part time, cyber security, cyber security, you can earn up to $135,000 in the United States. There are countries with scholarships, there are facilities, loans, there are different things all over the world. There are countries you will go to, you don't need to pay school fees. The information are there. Look for them. Don't ask me. I won't tell you. There are different things. People are harnessing. People are making dollars in Nigeria here. People are getting jobs in Nigeria here. They work from their homes. So go into the streets of Bethlehem, that's the present world, and get information. And Naomi heard that Boaz was stretching his wings. He now sent Ruth. The Bible says in Ruth chapter 3, verse 6, that Ruth, <laughs> it said, Ruth did according to her mother-in-law's instruction. So get a mentor. A mentor will give you the following ends. Number one, methodology. Number two, momentum. Excuse me, number three, money. Number four, will introduce you to men. Number five, will create memories in your mind. So get a mentor. Let me take them. A mentor will give you methodology, will give you money, will give you a model, create a mold for you, will give you momentum, introduce you to men. The thing has increased. Introduce you to men and then uh, have you in his memory. So get a mentor. Get a coach. It was Naomi that taught Ruth how to go. He said, when, when he is drunk, when he is married, go and lie down at the feet of... Now, that was the first time in the Bible, apart from those who raped their father, apart from Tamar, who went to, to, to sleep with uh, the father-in-law. This was the first time another a woman was going to chase a man. She broke routine, was going to chase a man, and the mother-in-law coached her. There is a law and a rule that Naomi must have known a loophole. There are people who knows, they are not open doors, they just have small windows, small slits, the needle's eye that you can pass through to greatness. If they share them with you, your story can change. When I came to really 
there was a man that told me, buy land now. So you see me, I can never fall to the ground. See, because I have land. And I took it with my left hand, put it in my pocket so that I will not eat with it. There are some things some people teach you. You hold them with your left hand so that you won't shake people with them, so that you won't eat with them. Put them in your left hand. That was how God helped me. But Ruth was strategic. Learn to be strategic when you are starting afresh. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. God bless you. The new book, uh, 60 to 70, is out. For those of you in the Ugeli Axis, Worry Axis, you can get them from Petra Christian Academy. I will speak to the manager of the online bookstore to make it available online. There is Echo Income. And two books are coming out. Two books are coming out. One is Keys to Understanding Women. Hmm. That one is bomb. Keys to Understanding Women. The next one is that it's a, there's a place called there. God bless you. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pokey Abraham, help me. I'm your friend, Dr. Dr. Charles. Charles uh, Pokey. Pokey. Do we take three questions? Yes, we can take questions. Okay, let's take three questions. And also remember the May, the April. Yes, we'll, we'll take three questions. Remember the master class for March 9th, March 9th, 8 p.m., 9th of March. I will need three questions from us, then we are done. Is there registration for that one? Yes, there's going to be registration. We'll brief them. There's going to be registration. And um, you can join this WhatsApp mentorship group. And then um, we'll have properties for sale. And which other thing? Um, other the books online. So three questions, and I'm done. I will count to five. There are no questions. The old man needs to go and sleep. One, two, three, four, five. God bless you. Isabel, I'm so happy you came. How can you change? My question is, how can you change the routine? OK. There was um, a military barrack. Um, there was a concrete slab. Some people will go there, and uh, three soldiers are always posted to the barrack, to the concrete slab, every night, every night. And then um, one day, they questioned, uh, why is it that soldiers stand on that concrete slab? Then they investigated. They now found out that when that concrete slab was initially made, animals used to come there and step on it. So they put... Um, Soldiers that will be driving the animals at night. The concrete slab has solidified, but out of regimentation and routine, they kept, they kept guarding. The question is, that thing you are doing, have you ever asked yourself, why are you doing it? Why are we doing this? Those lepers said that, why stay here and die? Um, Hebrew, uh, Jewish history believe that they are the sons of Gehazi. They say, why stay here and die? If we go into the city, there is the famine. If we go out, if uh, they don't kill us, we'll have food. So they went out. And the Bible says, as they step out, that the Syrians or the whoever heard a loud sound, and they said that the Jews are going to rent people to come. As the lepers were stepping with their feet that lacked a completeness, God was amplifying their effort. When they got there, the people had run away. They could have stayed at the, 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 the gate of the city continuously. So one day, question, why? People were waiting for the water to move before by an angel, before being healed. Jesus came, said, take up your mat and go. And the man took up his mat and went. The person somebody asked me from Ghana, uh, when am I coming to Ghana? Is that? So when will you be? In when will I be in Ghana? Uh, it's up to you. We have quite a sizable followership in Ghana. Thank you, Professor Moruo. 
We have quite a sizable, a sizable followership in Ghana. Look for a church that can host us for three days. I will come into Ghana and then spend three days with you, rest for two days and fly back to Nigeria. I want to be in Ghana. I want to be in South Africa. I want to be in Kenya. I want to, because of Isabel, I want to be in Kigali and uh, Cameroon. Cameroon. So, and I think that we have a followership in Namibia. So any of these countries, you arrange it, uh, we arrange it and then we'll come. What do you think a new business startup should consider, sir? Number one, do a feasibility study. Number two, observe those who have been doing the businesses before. Ask questions. And then if you ask questions, you will learn from them. And then when you start a business, ask yourself, is the business going to be demanded on a daily basis? You must use C.K. Prahalad, uh, base of the pyramid theory. Abraham, help me remember some questions. You will use C.K. Prahalad, Prahalad, base of the pyramid theory. Produce for the poor. Produce what the poor will buy on a daily basis in small units. Uh, is that then, do the invitations that will come. What people will buy in small units on daily basis by a large population. That's where you will get money. Okay. Any other question? Uh, one here says, so how can one become your real estate agent? Do you have a platform for that? We, we have not um, started um, accepting agents because the people buying from me, most of them are buying from overseas. And I want to act as the anchor for those overseas. Um, today, somebody from the United States came to inspect his land. Another person from Italy is sending the sister to come and inspect his land. Somebody from the United States sent the brothers to come and inspect their land. Most of the people buying from me are people from the diaspora. And I want to maintain integrity and reassurance in their minds. So I'm very careful in introducing um, people. But if you bring clients to buy from me, you are entitled to a certain percentage, and I will pay you that percentage to encourage you. OK. Uh, what else? So if you have it, I mean, we should just take two more questions. Uh, two more questions. How do we go? But every yeah, one says, how do you keep motivated, especially after all these early months? That's just the question. How do I keep motivated? How do one keep, maybe he's talking about himself, how do one keep motivated, especially after all these early months? Uh, you see, there must be a glory set before you. Jesus said um, he bore the shame of the cross because of the glory set before him. That's the Bible. So, listen, I'm having fun. I'm living in this house. I will wake up at my own pace tomorrow. I'm having fun. I was seen today when I was 30. I was seen today when I was 40. I was telling my wife, oh, today I sleep in hotels people pay for. I enjoy my life. So I kept this vision. In the book, there's a place called there. Put the vision of a glorious future ahead and start bearing the pain and walking towards the gain. Pay the P-R-I-C to be able to get the P-R-I-Z-E. In opening a school, how does one go about land acquisition? Um, number one, buy land that is easily accessible. One of the mistakes I made when I was opening my first school is that there's only one entrance to the place. Don't buy a land for a school that has only one entrance to the place. Buy a place where people can easily drive into, easily accessible. If my school had been along the road, it would have grown faster than what it is. So buy land where people can easily notice. You don't light a lamp and hide it under a bushel. So buy a land where people can easily... Then buy land where you can have space. I have a lot of space. Buy land where you can have space to put facilities, 
to games and the other one. Then when you want to buy land, you can buy and pay three times. You buy, you pay the initial deposit, they give you receipts, you do the survey, pay the second bit, pay the third bit, and you have gotten your land. I didn't pay once for the one I had in the will, and I paid three times. So that's how you go about it. But you must investigate to make sure you have the, the ownership of the right ownership of the place. If not, you can run into trouble. The WhatsApp number, the WhatsApp number, can, Ado, can you type the WhatsApp number for us? Or Abraham, can you type the WhatsApp number for mentorship? Any of you who know my number, uh, plus 234, plus 234, 70, 52, 13, 67, 63. God bless you. Share this video. I'm your friend. Let me say, I should say, yes. I'm your friend. Dr. Charles, Charles. Ah, oh. Pocky!